hearing. However, I can tell you that when I started working with people that were in the Illuminati, that wanted out, that were wanting to, sh that were sharing information in with me and everything, I thought at the time that the therapists were taking care of them. And then I began to realize that what was happening was is that hundreds of thousands of these mind-controlled slaves were going into therapists for various reasons, and uh, the therapist that knew something would begin to start working with some, some of the multiplicity in their minds. And the therapist would work they, uh, like one hour a week with these people and charge them maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars for that hour and they would tell these victims of mind control that they were getting better. These people thought, well this is great, I'm getting better. The therapist liked it because they were supporting themselves, they were making good money, and the Illuminati was liking it too because they were continuing to use these slaves. And I was looking at this situation and going, what's wrong with this? And so that's why I dived in where angels fear to tread and started working with a lot of these mind-controlled victims. And I went through hell, literally hell, to get this information and to try to save some of these people. It's too big of a job for one person. It really is. What we need is people who understand what is going on and understand some of the solutions and so we can form teams of people to try to help these victims of mind control. They have tremendous needs in many different ways. <clears throat> and people don't understand how sophisticated this is. In looking at how they have designed this mind control, the engineering and thinking that's gone into it, in my opinion, far surpasses what was put into the Apollo project. For everything that you're going to flippantly come up with, I'm sure that they have thought of at least a dozen, if, if not many more, ways to circumvent you uh, being able to undo the programming. For instance, many of the altars are dehumanized and told they don't have a heart. If you were to talk to that altar, or if you want to call it disassociative state, they think of themselves as a, a person with a personality. If you were to talk to that altar, they would tell you they don't have a heart. So if you tell them to give their heart to Jesus, that's not going to have any meaning. They have uh, them programmed so that if you quote scripture, you may very easily trigger a number of things to happen. One is, is that a deaf and dumb altar may take the body and they will not even hear you. Or if you're saying something like Jesus loves you, they have a scrambling altar that's programmed to take the body and that scrambling altar scrambles it so that uh, what they hear is, is Jesus hates you. So every time you say Jesus loves you, they hear Jesus hates you. I'm just giving you a tiny sampling of how sophisticated this programming really is. They've really out, Satan has really outdone himself. And they have a program for infiltrating the churches. And anyone who is a legitimate a Christian minister is going to be singled out and targeted. It's called the Black Widow Program. They have uh, these mind-controlled slaves that are taught in seduction, and they come in and seduce a minister, and then that minister will be blackmailed. Remember when uh, uh, Jimmy, um, J uh, no, um, no, okay. And now I've got myself mixed up. Okay, but when he fell, uh, there were 200 ministers that called into Assembly of God headquarters after, after he fell the next week and reported to uh, headquarters that they also had the same problem. <clears throat> this... Uh, Mind control is all around us and it's ruining everything that's of value and pure in this country. It's being used to dirty anything. And it's also uh, everything that the American people are proud of is, is actually being used for this mind control. 
For instance, Walt Disney, Disneyland, Disneyland, Disney World are great programming centers, great places for uh, Illuminati rituals, but uh, Disney movies, which people think are family movies, they have been some of the primary films used to program these mind control um, victims. <clears throat> the Wizard of Oz was one of the standard programming themes, and, the, and Alice in Wonderland was another standard programming theme. And then you see sometime in the 70s or 80s that they started switching and started using more of the alien type themes for the mind control programming. So you started seeing Star Wars and Star Trek and the Star Trek spin-offs being used a lot for the mind control. That uh, gave them an advantage. Uh, how did it give them the advantage? Well, like in the Alice in Wonderland, your master sets, him up, sets himself up as the white rabbit. In The Wizard of Oz, he's the wizard. In this alien stuff, the programmer pretends to the poor victim who's drugged and under hypnosis and being tortured that he is an alien, perhaps from a race that's far advanced of ours. I went through and tried to understand the encounters of the third kind, and uh, I interviewed people that had been abducted by aliens. What I found was is that every one of them had this type of mind control. Some of them I couldn't tell them about it because as I've been trying to get across to you, if you start working with some of these people, it's a very delicate thing and you could trigger suicide programs. But this one gentleman who I visited with, he uh, told me how benevolent these aliens were that kept abducting him. And again, they looked like people. It's interesting. And he said that although he didn't want them to, they continued to um, rape him. Well, people, this isn't benevolence. This is abuse. Uh, Area 51 is being used to program a lot of people with uh, this alien programming. Uh, if you uh, set in a program when you fly a helicopter to pick up a slave and you shine a light in his eyes, you can have him programmed to believe that that light is a UFO. So that's one explanation for a lot of the um, alien phenomena and the encounters of the third kind. But I do have something that's a treat, something special to show you. I told you that you would get a surprise. And if you look on here, this isn't as easy as on the original, but you'll see reptilian eyes in each of these photos that were gotten from American magazines and here, this is a little bit easier to see it here, see the reptilian eyes. I have met respectable observers, since, for instance, a Christian psychologist, a very elderly lady who I trust and respect, and she has seen someone with reptilian eyes. Here again is this picture again with reptilian eyes. And if you want to know the rest of the story, you need to invite me back again. That's like the lady who told the stories in Arabia. The, uh, <clears throat> the mind control uh, was uh, used during the 50s, it was, uh, they, they got the sophistication down for doing it to an individual. So you'll see that in the 1960s, groups like the CIA began shifting the emphasis of things into learning how to do, they infiltrated the different cults, like you have Jim Jones and the Branch Davidian, 
Um, that, there were many Branch Davidians, and they infiltrated one group of the Branch Davidians at Waco with seven other mind-controlled slaves um, like David Koresh. Uh, 